The 93X half ass Morning Show podcast is sponsored by Standard Heating and Air Conditioning. Summer's coming, but don't sweat it. Stay cool with Standard Heating and Air Conditioning. Beat the heat now and ensure comfort all summer long. Their expert technicians are ready to ensure your AC is in top shape. Call and schedule a tune-up today at 612-824-2656 or online at standardheating.com. The 93X half ass Morning Show Backtracks Edition. Amazon just unveiled the new fitness tracker. Anybody got a fitness tracker? No. No. Nope. This one's called the Halo Band, and there's a feature called Tone, T-O-N-E, that tracks your voice and tells you if you're being a prick or not. The AI, is that artificial intelligence? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. The AI in this new fitness tracker analyzes your voice and tells you what you sound like to other people. Things like happy, hopeful, confused, worried, affectionate, bored, and apologetic. And it's supposed to help with communication skills at work and in relationships. Okay, are we so dumb now that we need a watch to tell us when we're being jagoffs? Uh, yes. <laughs> I mean, no, to answer your question, I, I don't know that it's dumb. I think this is very helpful. Okay. Now, I'm never going to buy one, but I get that at home where I say something and I'm in a perfectly fine mood. <laughs> Everything's great. And then, well, I don't, uh, what's with your tone? Like, what do you mean what's with my tone? And I've, I've been told that I sound like I'm upset when I'm not at all, not even close. Okay. And if this happens at, I mean, at home, uh, I wouldn't say... Well, yeah, kind of often, actually. Yeah. Maybe every few weeks. Or you definitely get this, why are you yelling at me? Like, <laughs> <laughs> hey, I grew up in a household where the dad yelled. You don't, you've never heard yelling in your life. I don't yell. Now that you mention it, this would be valuable for you because you've told these stories before and they're always entertaining that whether it be your RBF, resting bitch face, or something about your delivery... Your family members aren't the only ones who read this from you, and you have to say, whoa, 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 wait a minute. No, I'm not upset at all. This is a common occurrence for you. Oh, the face thing, definitely. I just have a dumb face that I don't know how to control. Stupid face. I know. I remember I'd hear that. Hey, is everything all right? You know? Like, <laughs> like yeah, what do you mean? Well, you just, you look like something's bothering you. I'm like, no, it's just my face is stupid. I can't control it. I don't know what's going on. All right. You know, I got that yesterday from the roommate. I was sitting outside on the patio, and I was not thinking about anything, which is a beautiful feeling. It doesn't happen enough in my life. I was just completely lost in space. And she looked over and said, are you okay? So I, I can't imagine what kind of look I must have been presenting, but I have to say it was the most pe it was probably the most peaceful moment I'd had in years. <laughs> but but somehow my face was projecting something completely different. Well, now, now what happens is I, I second guess everything. You've heard me in here before say, okay, I've been told I'm not good at judging my tone. You know, so I have to explain it. I'm sure you've heard me say that because I don't, I don't know how it's coming across sometimes. Maybe well, I take that back. I think I know, but then I'm told that's not how it came across. Maybe I just get you even more than your family does because we have seen each other pretty much every day for the last 20 years. But I don't get that from you. There is an obvious difference in me, from, if you ask me, between regular Josh and upset Josh. How people are confusing the two, I don't know. You are very obvious when you're pissed. And it is interesting what some people consider yelling. Like the way I'm coming off right now. There are people that consider this yelling. Yeah. This is nothing. <laughs> All right, so, you know, I'm glad I'm not alone. Thank you, Brotherhood, for making me feel better. A lot of people have, are texting and saying they, too, have been accused of having resting bitch voice. Resting bitch voice. And it's, though, it's horrible because then you wonder, well, how many people have I upset thinking <laughs> I was upset when I wasn't at all? And then I second-guess my tone constantly. I'm always thinking about it. <laughs> so to the point where I probably sound stupid saying, I have been told I can't judge my tone. That's interesting. By I'm the way, literally tone deaf, if you ask my family. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I can read you pretty easily. By the way, the Brotherhood, the All-Knowing Brotherhood has proved themselves again. 
Sam Elliott's character name from the movie Mask? Gar. I never would have remembered that. His name was Gar. By the way, uh, Dairy Intern Jesus says it's raining like two cows pissing on a flat rock in Maiden Rock right now. Wisconsin. That's Wisconsin, right? Maiden Rock? Somebody help me out. Uh, I think so. I thought it was Wisco. I've certainly heard of it. I know it's raining really bad here right yeah, now. It is. Hey, whoa, whoa, whoa. What's your problem? Jeez. <laughs> you, you hear the tone of her voice? By the oh, way, what's, this. What's your problem? Oh, God. Here we go. Oh, sorry. Did I blow up? <laughs> yeah. Uh, this this tracker, whatever they call it, this fitness tracker, it, it does the fitness tracking that you'd expect it to do, counting steps and things like that. It's $99 on Amazon, but you can request early access and get it for 65 bucks right now. You also have to subscribe to the tracking app for $4 a month, but the first six months are free. Look it up if you feel like it. The latest fitness tracker will tell you how you're coming off. This text says, I hate the term resting bitch face. I'm not resting. I put a lot of effort into looking this un- <laughs> unapproachable. <laughs> hey, man, that would be a great skill. To be able to look unapproachable. All I have to do is have my normal face, apparently, according to some people. That's not true. Because what I mean is, you know, when we do social events, which will never be back, we will never have another radio station party. I'm convinced of it at this point. When we do station events, people love to come up and talk to you. But I mean, uh, my face is just stupid. Some people are texting in saying they get asked, are you having a good time? And I get asked that, too. And I, Oh, yeah, I get that, too. Yeah. But I never, you know, it's, you don't want to make a big deal out of it and be like, what do you mean? You just have to say, yeah, yeah, everything's good. Okay. Now, I can relate to that. I don't often hear people say, what's with you? What's with your tone? Why are you yelling? I, 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 I don't have that problem like you do. At station events, specifically, is what's going through my mind right now. At damn near every one of them. Someone has walked up and said, uh, you not having a very good time, huh? And I have to say, no, I'm, I'm fine. So maybe I have a dose of that resting bitch face. At uh, radio station appearances just with myself, bar gigs over the years, I've often had people walk up and say, wow, you look like you really hate this stuff. And I have to say, <laughs> I often have to explain myself that, no, I'm... I'm in a completely normal mood. Not one way or the other. I'm fine. So, Maybe what we should do is bring back those hyper-color t-shirts and have them be mood-related. Hyper-color t-shirts. Oh, yeah. Remember those where your body heat would activate the shirt and it would change colors? Mm -hmm. We could do that with emotions. Although, yours would probably be whatever color horny is. Oh, (laughs) what color is horny? Is it pink? Pink 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 or purple? purple. Irritated? Irritated? Oh, look, that Nick's horny again. Yeah. Emotions are taking me over. Remember when the Bee Gees sang that to you? But where I was going with this, if I was able, wouldn't this be valuable, Josh, if we could flip a switch and make ourselves completely unapproachable? In certain settings, that would be very valuable. Do you understand where I'm going with this? Well, maybe I need an example. Like at a wedding reception or something. I don't really want to be talked to. I just want to sit here until this disaster is over. I don't in situations where you don't want to talk. Sure. To be able to project, wow, I'm not going to go over and talk to that dude. I'd like that. I coined the term bitch face in the early 90s because I have one. Nothing resting about it. It's full on bitch. That's from first bitch face Jesus. Jesus. <laughs> Another text says, nothing will make me yell louder than when my wife asks why I'm yelling when I'm not. Oh, yeah. That is frustrating. Pisses I'll tell you me what. Off. Pisses me off. Why are, why are you yelling at me? Like, I don't know if you've ever heard yelling, if, that, if you think that's yelling. It's, it, it's all in the upbringing, I guess. Maybe. If you didn't have parents that really raised hell when you screwed up, then I guess you've never heard yelling. I mean, I'm conscious of it because, like I said, my dad would yell. We and had, it took almost nothing to get him there, too. Pr- pretty much all of us yelled. All we did between the, my 5th and 20th birthday uh, was yell at each other. <laughs> That's all we, every, every, all communication was yelling. The Half-Assed Morning Show backtracks. Half-Assed Morning Show. They're loud. They lose control. They do their little circus act. They're a nuisance. 93X.
Our technicians are geared up and ready to make sure your system is running reliably this summer. Regular maintenance from standard heating helps prevent costlier breakdowns in the future, and we know they always happen at the worst times. Summer's coming, but don't sweat it. Stay cool with standard heating and air conditioning. Beat the heat now and ensure comfort all summer long. Their expert technicians are ready to ensure your AC is in top shape. Call and schedule a tune-up today at 612-824-2656 or online at standardheating.com. John brings his skewed sense of humor. Jeff brings tips to cut strokes off your next round. Together, it's those weekend golf guys. They'll pay a lot of money to PXG and Titleist and Callaway and on and on and on. Right? How many yards do you think you're going to pick up with that extra driver? I think I can get an extra 5 to 10. What if I give you 15 to 20? <laughs> you pay me more. Jeff Smith right? teaches on a sliding scale. <laughs> those weekend golf guys, the podcast, part of the Believe Network. Just search B-L-E-A-V on YouTube or wherever you listen. The 93X Half-Assed Morning Show Backtracks Edition. He says loaded double. Drive to deep left field. Way back and gone. That's great. Yeah. Added in crowd noise to make Brad Ryder sound legit. <laughs> we got to tell Dick about that. Tuesdays are busy around here. We got uh, CARE 11 news anchor Randy Shaver. Hi, Randy. Good morning. Hello, Randy. We've got sex education professor Brad Ryder. <laughs> Who could have predicted that you would have brought that clip up again today? Everyone? We're going yeah. to bring it up to Dick Bramer. And, uh, and also, uh, every Tuesday, Twins television play-by-play pimp Dick Bramer joins us. Hello, Dick. Morning, fellas. Morning. Good morning. You know, one of these days we'd love to have some baseball to talk about when we have you on, for (laughs) Pete's sake. Well, um, I'm basically in the fun and games business, and I have a hard time having fun with no games. But thankfully, uh, we'll have two of them today. Yeah, you know, uh, you don't even know if we're legit yet. You don't even know if we know how to talk baseball yet, because every time we have you on, uh, there's some kind of cancellation. Yeah, yeah, it's, uh, you know, we've we've dealt with the COVID thing this week, and it's going to be interesting to see what happens. Uh, The encouraging thing is the Marlins went through something like this last year and came out on the other end of it and won their first five games. We'll see, uh, you know, first of all, if the Twins can break Oakland's uh, winning streak of eight. But, uh, you know, this is a team that has has not only not played in a few days, but they haven't you know, had any batting practice, no cage work, guys who need some attention in the trainer's room haven't been able to get in there. So uh, it'll be an interesting day, to say the least. Seven innings, each game, seven, seven innings. Right. So uh, uh, I still have a hard time adjusting to that. And for those of uh, your listeners who don't really uh, like the seven-inning rule, boy, I think everybody in with the Twins organization is glad that it's in effect this year to not have to not – do everything that I just said about not having batting practice and uh, training uh, room uh, privileges and all that and uh, not have to play at least 18 innings. Uh, I think 14 will be enough. Well, how, how do you keep going through a straight back-to-back doubleheader? Someone bring well, this. It, it, you know, the challenge, and of course, I've been at it long enough to where that used to be the norm. You have a half hour between games, and then they started having split doubleheaders. But right. Uh, when we had one the other day, uh, honestly, we were filling out our lineup cards uh, during the telecast because the lineups <laughs> came out late, and you know we're, you know, <laughs> we put a graphic up as to you know what the batting order is and uh, you know the defensive alignment and all that, and it's like, well, let's find out together who's in the lineup. You know, we're <laughs> we don't have the, we don't have the time really to even scribble it down. We'll see what happens today. It's. Uh, uh, it, like I said, it's going to be an interesting day, and uh, the hope is that the Twins can, uh, you know, get back on track here and get back to the 500 mark today. Right, but you might see a little rust on the boys. Well, yeah, I mean, with all that you mentioned, you know, yeah, you, right. You work out every day in spring training, and and you know, frankly, with all the day games, uh, I know this team was looking forward to having some night games on the West Coast. So you can get into a routine with batting practice and and uh, you know infield and all that kind of stuff, and uh, so you know to not have that now for a few days uh, makes the challenge even greater. Yeah, would you prefer just to play a straight doubleheader, or do you prefer some time off, a split doubleheader? Well, I don't know. I uh, when we did one the other day. Uh, it was uh, I was working with Justin Morneau, and of course I always defer to the players, right? Because they're the stars of the show. Right. I don't know that anybody cares one way or another the, the difficulty or preference of a broadcaster. But Justin's point was that you know it's really tough 
on the players to have the split double header because you you know you you're hot playing a game and then you cool down and then you got to fire it up again mm-hmm. three hours later. But of course, the reason those are played is because you want to get uh, two gates of uh, attendance instead of one. But as a fan, of course, I always you know. I would wait for the double headers at uh, you know Met Stadium just to be able to get two for the price of one. Do you have somebody bringing you you know uh, Gatorades or Jack and Cokes or something along the way? You know when you <laughs> have. Them? <laughs> well, uh, if we're at home, that's one thing. We have some ability to have some food, but we're going to be at Target Field at, uh, tonight for the double header, and there's just going to be a you know real small number of people who are necessary. Uh, uh, for our telecast, and so there's going to be nobody else there. So we'll be uh, bringing uh, bringing something along the way, just to maybe uh, throw down uh, a sandwich uh, in between games. You're tough, man. You're tough. See that? Yeah. My, you know what? You know my problem is once I get a meal in me, I just want to go CP times. You know, I just want to yeah, go to bed. Yeah. You know. Yeah, I'm, I, I fight that too. But uh, thankfully, uh, uh, as long as you got a game to watch, or in this yeah. case, watch on television, uh, uh, it's something to keep your brain engaged. Were you listening to our intro? Did you hear that home run call? Uh, I did, but it was a little distorted, so I wasn't sure whether that was me or somebody else. That wasn't you. Hell no, that wasn't you. (laughs) Wow, that was a compliment. (laughs) You thought it was him. You just made Brad's day. (laughs) Brad Ryder. Brad Ryder? Yeah. Doing what? Brad, tell him what happened. Tell him what happened. Well, so my my son plays for for Egan High School, and uh, Egan Television is doing a handful of games. And before the game last week, they had a uh, the, the guy that was supposed to do the game wasn't able to do the game. So I found out about two hours before his game that they asked me to do uh, both play by play and color. I was I was solo for Egan TV last week in the, in their game against uh, Apple Valley. So, so okay, we- well, um, it's fun, <laughs> isn't it? You... It's not bad. I had a good time. <laughs> and and I right. think, and, and Brad, you and I have known each other for a long time, and now I think you will believe what I have told you for years, that anybody can do what I do. Uh... <laughs> well, see, uh, we were busting his chops last week when he played it for us because uh, we thought he sounded he sounded like he was asleep when he was making the call. But then... Well, as I, as I told a few other people, I'm in, in the setup at, at the high school that I was at, I was literally about five or six feet away from parents. Well, so what, so, man? So go for it's it. Not, it's not like I can sit there and go... Whoa, that was an awful play by Johnny at third base. You know, I mean, you can't, you've got to be tone it down just a, a little bit. Uh, we're, well, we're my, not... my son is a, a minor league broadcaster, and during the winter, uh, he, he did some high school events as well just to keep active because there was nothing else to do. And uh, so, yeah, he, he dealt with that too. Uh, he's uh, getting ready to ramp up his season in Fredericksburg, Virginia. And uh, so, yeah, it's it's a different world when you have people sitting right next to you who have a, a vested interest in the outcome of the yeah. game. Yeah, don't, don't defend Brad. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't need any. Um, it, it, it was great, Josh, when you added the sound effects. That was. Uh, could hey. we, is there a chance we could hear that again with, with fake sound effects? With the sound effects? If you could. Yeah, I'm not yeah. trying to put you on the spot. But, sure. So Dick can get a better idea. what. This uh, was a home run call, Dick. There was a home run call. Yeah, okay. what kind of All competition right. he's got out there. <laughs> he says loaded double. Drive to deep left field. Way back. And gone. What do you think about that? He said, gone, like wow. that. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> That's what we said. Do you want to hear well, that? But, uh, you, you know, I don't have, I've never had a home run call. Brad, I think you need to come up with something, you know, a signature phrase that you, when you, uh, when someone hits a home run, <laughs> so you could put your stamp on the home run. Maybe we could uh, task the Brotherhood with coming up with one in case I have to do another game. Oh, that's a great <laughs> idea. And that, and then well, I it's going to be all that. filth, dude. It'll be all filth. It'll all be sex ed. Really? Yeah. This is a high school game you're calling. It'll be nothing you can repeat. Uh, but that's a good idea. That's a good idea. Maybe we'll see what they come up with. Um, you know, it was, uh, you know, Brad, you did all right. We're just trying to poke fun at you a little bit and I may have to do another one or two, I just found out, so I'll let you know. Oh, this will be Back good. Back by popular demand. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. I think you should ask your listeners for uh, for some input for yeah. a home run call for Brad. Yeah, yeah, text us real quick. If you have a home run call for Brad and we can say it in front of Dick Bramer, <laughs> <laughs> we are uh, 68683. Start your message with Nick, Josh, or Dana. Let's see if we can collect something here before we have to let Dick go in about 10 minutes. Uh, yeah, so you did all right, Brad. 
Uh, Dick, you never came up with, uh, you know, that's the thing now. You're well aware of this, uh, you know, a catchy, hip home run slogan. Why did you never, did you just say, ah, it's not me, I'll just, uh, because there's nothing wrong with just, you know, sticking with a regular call. In my right, opinion. well, I, I think, uh, and I, again, started a long, long time ago, but I decided right away that every home run I would see, and I didn't know if it would be five or 5,000, but every home run I would see, uh, would be different than any other. Uh, the count would be different. The pitcher would be different. The situation, the score, uh, the mm-hmm. location of, the, of, of where the ball land, all of it would be different. So why would I uh, come up with a home run call that would try to make them all sound the same? And, uh, you know, hey, there's some great home run calls out there, and, and, and you know, God bless the announcers that have come up with them. But I, I just decided that, you know, it would, you know, hopefully I would have a long career at this and that I, I didn't really want the viewers to get tired of a home run call. Yeah, so that's I a guess, good point. You know, whether it sort of was the right decision or not, I don't know, but uh, yeah. I'm sure not, I'm sure not going to start now. For Pete's sake, I think you've done just fine. Okay, Brad Ryder, Dick Bramer, Randy Shaver, what do you think of slam o wham when the ball goes over the fence? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, it's, it's if Brad's comfortable with it. That's that's the key. Well, but we want, I mean, you, maybe we, Brad should try each of them out. Maybe well, we, we should listen to it, Brad saying them. Yeah, try slam o whammo. I can't do it on the spot. You got to give what? me. You gotta, He's shy. Well, I, I tell you, I tell you what. Because, because what you're going to do is you're going to record all of these and then play them <laughs> back to me. So I'm point. writing these down now. I, I may go ahead and use slam o whammo. <laughs> Man, if you did that, we would die. <laughs> yeah, I, I think I'd, I'd probably die too. But I, uh... Brad gets so shy sometimes. Now, there's right. hockey ref Jesus. This is a good one. I wonder if anyone's ever used this. Uh, you just say, I like dingers. Now, that's a reference to that little league ball player from sure. a couple. Do you know who I'm talking about? Right. Yeah. Yep. Uh, the, the, the little little I like kid turtles. Well, not like a, no, no, not oh. I like turtles. I like turtles. No, that's no, what I, no. That's no. what I thought you meant. There was a little league dick. You remember this? There was a little league ball player a couple years ago in the little league World Series, and the kids all step up to the camera and introduce themselves, and the kid said, "Hey, my name's Donnie Jones, and I hit dingers." That's what he <laughs> right. said. Right? Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. yeah. So that's kind of fun. His name's Big Al. Big Al. What yeah. about what about Whammy? You say Whammy, Brad. Whammy's good. I still like Slam. What was the first one? Slam O Whammo. I like Slam O Whammo the best. Well, we All got right. a, we got a ways to go. Yeah. <laughs> but Dick, Dick, you should you should use one of these if someone hits one out tonight. Uh, You're free to steal any of these. I, I think I think that the Slam O Whammo would be um, a really good one for you to use, Brad. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, like I said, there's not not a lot of these I'm comfortable saying in front of Dick. No, Brenner. no, not at all. A lot of references <laughs> to underwear and things like that. There's and, a reference to a clip we play. Brad is, you know, that that one. Right. <laughs> no, man, I'm not going to talk that. about yeah. it. Not going to talk about. it. So, Brad, maybe uh, we'll we'll get back to you on these. We'll get back. Okay. To you. All right. Um, when we're not in polite company. When we're not in polite. <laughs> exactly. Well, I was, you know, I was wondering, you know, so, you know, Brad got thrown into a situation there where he wasn't, uh, you know, completely prepared and, and he's going to pay for it for the rest of his career here on the radio. <laughs> Dick, you've called a little bit of everything over your day. Uh, have you, were, was there ever like a last minute situation when you were thrown into, I don't know who's who or what's what, but you had to make the best of it? Um, boy, you know, we've, we've tragically had some, uh, uh, things happen right before game time that we've had to deal with. And, uh, we had one this spring, uh, when uh, Mike Bell, the bench coach for the twins, uh, passed away shortly before we hit the air. Uh, you know, um, we were infamously, I guess we were getting ready to do a game years ago and we found out right before game time. Uh, that the uh, 35W bridge collapsed, and, and you know, I mean, I it, it, those types of things are really, really tough because, as I said, we're in the fun and games business, and we find ourselves dealing with some, you know, tragic situations and, uh, you know, sad situations and all that. I, I, you know, when I've done a lot of things, I've, I've enjoyed every sporting event I've ever done, even though I'm totally unqualified to do to speak 
uh, eloquently or intelligently about women's gymnastics. Thankfully, <laughs> <laughs> thankfully, uh, when I did those years ago, uh, I was paired with, uh, in this case, it was Robin Hubner, who was an oh. all-American gymnast at uh, Minnesota. And so, you know, you find yourself frankly, ignorant about the event you're covering, but if you're with a good analyst, uh, somehow you can get by. Sure, sure. Are you familiar, Dick, with uh, Randy, uh, Red Deer Randy, what the hell's his last name? The, the, uh, the uh, Mew, uh, Moeller? Mueller, Moeller. Moeller, yeah. Red Deer Randy Moeller, who, who I don't know if he still does it, but uh, he was the lead announcer for the Florida Panthers. Okay, yeah, no, I'm not aware of him, nope. Boy, do you still have any of those sitting around, Josh? Yeah, yeah, I'm looking for him. Uh, Randy Moeller played in the NHL, um, and uh, he's been, I don't know, if, look it up, Wapple, see if he's still doing Florida Panthers hockey. But he had a thing going where he had Panthers fans just send him an email with a movie quote or, or whatever, <laughs> and he would incorporate it into the goal calls. We had him on the air years ago, it seemed like a really good guy, and it became a, a real popular thing with Panthers fans. So that's kind of what we're doing here with listeners texting in for Brad. I was just bringing it up in case Josh you had a couple of favorites over there. That, that I think uh, that might be a computer ago. Oh, I see. It happens. I remember. You, know, you, know, you guys are aware of uh, the TV show. I think it's still in production. Brock Meyer. Yeah. Uh, Hank Azaria playing the play-by-play guy. <laughs> yeah. and, that, and that all started uh, as a video. And his shit was he used a line from The Godfather for every, uh, uh, every broadcast. <laughs> and uh, it kind of poked a little fun at, at uh, I think, home run calls. <laughs> I'd have to see more of that program. I've certainly heard of it. Uh-oh. There you go. Godfather <laughs> theme. <laughs> oh, man. Well, you know, uh, Dick, before we let you go, you know what we were talking about a couple days ago? We were talking about, just for a minute or two, we talked about the, the left field dome dog Chuck Knobloch target practice from a few years. Mm-hmm. From, uh, how many years ago was that now? Oh boy, Tom Kelly was still managing, so it had to have been late nineties, I would I guess. Yeah, 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 it could have been. Yeah. Brad, Brad, don't interrupt Dick Bramer. What he's trying. <laughs> <laughs> when I actually know the answer to a question, I'm going to. I it. know you like to get in there. Two thousand and one, you say? Yeah, it was because I was I was with the club then, and, it okay. was, and Dick's right. It was when Tom Kelly was managing, so it was two thousand. Was that one of the craziest things either one of you had ever seen at, at a ball game? <sighs> well, it was for me. I mean, we we had uh, you know Bob Casey was the public address announcer and he scolded the fans and Tom Kelly walked down the left field line and wagged his fingers uh, at the crowd in that general area oh. and you know not all the fans were, were throwing the hot dogs at Knobloch and uh, to be honest with you I think it was the whole idea was uh, generated uh, you know, by a radio station a morning show and it really was unfortunate because it you know, we I, I think we made a good impression on fan uh, baseball fans around the world when we won a World Series in '87 and '91, and we didn't rush the field and we didn't do this. We just stood and cheered and behaved ourselves, and that that was way over the line, I thought. And uh, Tom came out of the dugout, and he, you know, Tom didn't come out of the dugout when we won a World Series. He came <laughs> right. out of the dugout <laughs> and walked down the line. He was he was really upset about that, and I don't blame him. Well, I didn't remember that there was a radio station connection. Jesus Christ, was it us? I don't know. It wasn't no. us. I, okay, good. <laughs> I didn't, I've never heard that before. No, neither would I. Oh, man. Yeah, that was a real gong show. Well, uh, Dick, we uh, wish you the best of luck today. It's going to be a uh, back-to-back game starting at 5.30. Twins in the athletics on uh, Bally Sports North. Man, I, uh, I love talking to you, and uh, we look forward to already to talking to you next week. Yeah, I look forward to it too, guys. That uh, hopefully we'll get this uh, season resumed and with no more interruptions. And I think this team's uh, going to be a fun team to watch, but it's hard to uh, say that when they're not on TV. So we'll get uh, back to business here this afternoon. Keep them going out there, Dick. Thank you. All right, guys. Thank you. The Half Assed Morning Show Backtracks. Half Assed Morning Show. They're loud. They lose control. They do their little circus act. They're a nuisance. 93X. Our technicians are geared up and ready to make sure your system is running reliably this summer. Regular maintenance from standard heating helps prevent costlier breakdowns in the future. And we know they always happen at the worst times. Summer's coming, but don't sweat it. Stay cool with standard heating and air conditioning. Beat the heat now and ensure comfort all summer long. Their expert technicians are ready to ensure your AC is in top shape. Call and schedule a tune-up today at 612-824-2656 or online at standardheating.com. 
The Bigger Pockets portfolio of podcasts are worthy of your investment. We're having a real conversation as real real estate investors. New episodes available every day. It's important to buy where it makes money and not necessarily where you want to travel to. Bigger Pockets on the market, rookie real estate or money podcast. The purpose of flipping is to create more cash so then you can reinvest into other types of properties. The Bigger Pockets podcast on YouTube or wherever you listen. The 93X half assed Morning Show Backtracks Edition. You guys hang out on Reddit now and again? Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, once in a while. Really? Yep. That's, what was that Reddit page, Josh, that you introduced me to a, a decade ago when I couldn't stop touching myself? Well, I can't take credit. That was retired Air Force Jesus, I believe, who uh, told you about Gone Wild. There you go. Yeah. I, I almost ended up in the hospital. Uh, for how many days I stayed awake looking at Reddit gone wild. Like that episode of Family Guy where Quagmire discovers there's porn on the internet and they don't see him for a couple days and he <laughs> comes out and his left hand is just fully <laughs> jacked and he's got a beard and look in his eye like, what What, what day is it, guys? Yeah, I remember that. I've been, I've been looking at that, that internet. <laughs> um, I would have been hospitalized maybe for just... <laughs> malnutrition i just didn't do anything but look at those so has anyone seen the post on reddit about a child and eating dog feces yeah it, the picture's a little rough <laughs> dang it sorry about the pun ah uh, yeah <laughs> that, that. you're just a, a an unintentional pun machine yeah. hey before we move on i found that quagmire clip oh you want to play that Hey, Quagmire, what do you got there? It's the new Sports Illustrated swimsuit issue. Check it out. Those swimsuit issues don't excite me like they used to. I've been spoiled by internet porn. It's true. Totally. What do you mean, internet porn? You, uh, don't know about internet porn? Don't know what? I'm not really a computer guy. Quagmire, I would think you of all people would know about internet porn. They've got like thousands, literally millions of <laughs> naked pictures on the internet. <laughs> what? And videos, thousands of them. You guys are messing with me. Quagmire, you don't use the internet? You mean that crappy dial-up thing that's a pain in the ass? No, I don't use the damn internet. I thought that was for nerds. <laughs> Why didn't you guys tell me? Well, yeah, you can even see Tanya Harding's honeymoon video on there. I mean, it's gross, but it's like famous gross. <laughs> <laughs> so good. All right, so Reddit users have been criticizing the parents of a child who appeared in a don't eat dog poop ad. A photo of the ad was uploaded by a Reddit user called Young White Claudia. Uh, I'm only mentioning this in case Reddit people are, are sensitive about getting credit for certain things. So the, a photo of the ad was uploaded to Reddit with the caption, Imagine growing up and finding out your parents allowed you to appear in an ad that depicted you eating dogs. The image shows a child with dog poo across their face and hands with the warning, to her it looks like chocolate, but one lick and she could lose her sight. <laughs> uh, many viewers or whatever you call it, users of Reddit, were kind of confused by this, and I'm one of them. Is this a problem with children? Do they bend over and, and eat dog feces? Uh, not that I'm aware of. Josh, you're the father here. Are your kids ever, uh, you know, just go for a snack in the backyard? No, they've never even expressed an interest in it. I've seen dogs do it, sometimes of the, eating their own. Sure, I have I have a dog that would do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've, or, known, I've known a dog or two that's done that, and I, I hated it every time. Mm -hmm. Okay, so over 16,000 users have upvoted the post, whatever that means, and hundreds continue to comment on this effing deal. One user basically said, I've never met a child who is this dumb. And I want to get back to uh, uh, this part of the story, too. One lick and she could lose her sight. So if, if children or maybe adults eat enough dog feces, do they go blind? I, didn't, I never knew that was a problem, you know? I thought that was just masturbation that did that. <laughs> <laughs> I'd never heard that about eating feces. This, this whole thing is so bizarre. I am a little thrown by it. One user wrote, Surely 
the smell would be enough to put a child off of eating dog feces. All right, be honest, and parents in our listing audience, have you caught your children eating dog feces? I, I have to know for sure if this is really a thing or not. Or cat. Yeah. Have they reached into the litter box? Uh, yeah, 68683, start your message with Nick, Josh, or Dana. We won't, we won't say who you are. We won't throw you under the bus yeah, like we're, that. We're not going to call Child Protective Mm-mm. Services or anything. So I looked some stuff up, and it looks like they have over 100 cases every year of partial blindness in children from eating um, dog poop. You are really? effing kidding yeah. me. Wow. And, and, it, and good on you for looking that up, Wapple. Johnny on the spot. That is incredible. Yeah, and it looks like just one pile of dog poop can do it to you because it contain, contains a million round worm eggs. All, oh. what, all dog poop does, or just if, if yep. it has it in there? All dog if poop does. Wow, so not even if it's the right batch of dog poop. So it can, <laughs> it can give you stomach aches, throat infections. Oh, I bet asthma. it could give you a stomach <laughs> ache. <laughs> Bad breath. Does it yeah. mention bad oh, breath? Terrible Palatosis. breath. <laughs> <laughs> Medical, me- asthma, you said? Asthma? Yeah. I'll give you yeah. asthma. Medical coding Jesus said, my friend's daughter ate dog poop when she was less than a year old. She's completely blind at five. I mean, completely fine at five. <laughs> <laughs> here's, a li- here's a listener saying that bird poop will make you go blind. I had no idea about any of this. Uh, This person said, my kids have caught me eating dog poop. What do I do? (laughs) (laughs) Setting a bad example there. (laughs) It's a popsicle. (laughs) Now, here's a listener who says, my youngest puts everything he sees in his mouth. Uh, So this listener says, I could see it happening someday, but it hasn't happened yet. My kid would pick up the chicken poop. And try to hand it to me, says Joe Bob Jesus. <laughs> oh, nice. That's a nice little present. Ah, wow. This is just a completely different so re- out- outlook on life yeah, here. I remember as a kid, there, you know, we would have worksheets where you put Mr. Yuck stickers on things like bleach or, you know, um, antifreeze, you know, like windshield wiper <laughs> fluid. Like, don't drink this. This is bad. But I never, they never told us anything about dog crap back in elementary no, school. No, not a damn thing. Here's a listener who says, my daughter has eaten cat turds. I almost threw up when I found out about it, and she couldn't be bothered. <laughs> Not a big deal, Mom. Well, you put a little buffalo sauce on them, they're great. Oh, That'd wow. be good to hold over your kid, though. <laughs> Next time your kid gives you a smart mouth, maybe when uh, they're 17, 18. Yeah. Hey, aren't you that cat poop eater? Yeah. <laughs> I do know this is the only story I can tell you about children and dog turds, because um, I had no idea this was a problem. And that, that fact or that stat that Wapple read us is incredible. A hundred kids a year do go blind, you said? Yeah, partial blindness. Partial blindness from eating. Does it say if it's permanent or temporary? Uh, doesn't Sorry to say. put you on the spot. <clears throat> That's an, I, I've never heard that. So I knew this one couple who just were terrible about cleaning up the dog turds in their backyard. I am... Oh, God, come on. Give me a word other than anal to use in this story. (laughs) I am a stickler for that. I go out there almost every day. I just, when I was a kid, we had a couple of dogs, and my brother and I were lazy. We never cleaned up the dog turds in the yard. We were always stepping in it, but we were too lazy and just stupid to do anything about it. So now as a grown person with my own property, I am a stickler for it. Um, I, I knew this couple who just never bothered picking up the turds, and they also had a couple of young kids, and the kids would go play in the yard and come back to the house for dinner just covered in turds. Oh, oh we got to wash the dog turds off the kids again. We'll go out there with a shovel for Pete's sake. Yeah. It's much easier to do it one or two at a time than it is to go out there and deal with 300 landmines all over the backyard. This person says, all of my kids have eaten horse turds. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, sort of that one Philadelphia fan after they won the Super Bowl. Remember that? The Eagles? Oh, yes, I do. At the parade. Yeah, the parade or the celebrate. Yeah, he got the police horse crapped and someone's like, eat it. And he just grabbed a handful and shoved it down his mouth. Yes, I remember that video. Wait, Wapple, didn't you say you needed glasses? Uh, Yeah, back in the day. Hmm. Are you a turd eater? <laughs> Maybe I am. <laughs> I, I kicked the bucket a while ago. That's why I got my vision back. You died a while ago. <laughs> Were any of you known as the kid who would eat this and that and this and that around the house? 
No. My um, parents have never told me one story where, well, well there was one. I, uh, they gave us plastic toy cowboy six shooters with plastic bullets. And I did decide to swallow one of the bullets, and my mother had to uh, fish it out of my poop. <laughs> I don't know why she. Uh, just to I make, know, sure, I know make sure it passed. Just yeah. to make sure it was there. Yes. I was going to say, I know why, because a friend of mine, he ate a Lego. And I remember his parents telling us about it, and they had to wait for it, make sure it came out. But were any of you any any stories your parents have told you about? Oh, she, you know, a little Wapple upped and ate the rat poison or anything like that. Mm-mm. Okay. No, I was I was such a picky eater that I, I wouldn't even consider eating something that wasn't. Yeah, I was terrified. No. Yeah. Especially no dog turds. Yeah, I had no idea about this kind of thing. So again, the part of the story is that Reddit users are upset at the parents of this child for putting him or her in this ad. You know. When this child grows up. Well, I think I'd have a good sense of humor about it. I might be like, well, I hope you got a lot of money for that. Because <laughs> it is kind of gross when you look at it. I don't even think I could look at it. Because it, as it's described here in the story, the child has... It's everywhere. Feces on its face and yeah. mouth and hands. It's just, my God. I mean, now that I know of this about children... Um, Next time my yard, let's say I get lazy for a while again, like when I was a kid. Let's say my yard becomes overwhelmed by dog bombs. I'll just ring the dinner bell for the neighborhood kids, I guess. And, uh, <laughs> That's by, the way to go. By the end of the afternoon, it'll all be taken care of. Free turds. Now, have you ever had to haul off and make a deuce in the woods? Yes. Not that I, I, I would think I'd remember. I'll say no. I have. Dana? Not in the woods. I have to do it outside, but not necessarily in the middle of the woods or anything. Wapa, well, what was your situation? Camping trip, frisbee golf adventure? Uh, <laughs> uh, were you running from the police? What was the situation? Actually, yeah, frisbee golf. There wasn't a porter potty around. Porter potty? There wasn't a porter potty. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> okay. So you just went in and made sure there's no poison ivy down there and let it fly? Yeah, what did you do? So you, you weren't prepared for this. No, so I walked in the woods, uh-huh. got some leaves, and then just pulled down the pants, you, did my business, and wiped it with the leaves. You really used leaves? Yeah, went on my way. Didn't you not, didn't you not have a pair of socks on? No, I didn't think of that. Yeah. No. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's the move. You know, I, I remember you telling me this story. Didn't you also forget you brought toilet paper with you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, I always you, have toilet paper in my car. I remember you feeling really stupid afterwards. Well, I used to have to uh, deuce in the woods when I was a kid. We'd go on Canadian fishing trips, and we would camp on an island. Or I, I shouldn't say camp. We would stop for shore lunch on a random island in the middle of nowhere. So there were a handful of times where I had to sit on a log. Uh, But we had toilet paper uh, in the boat, you know, for such situations. Magazines. (laughs) Um, But, uh, you know, I I landed a few wood ticks in the process, uh, but nothing terrible. And then Josh knows the stories about my emergency outdoor deuces. You had a lot of those. I had to use a pair of my underwear. Uh, <laughs> leaves, I, I, you know, I always heard you can use leaves, but I always thought that that sounds damaging. Yeah, that just sounds. Yeah, like, like you're gonna get a rash. Well, it could be. Luckily, dang- I used my socks and my underwear when I was in an emergency. Yes, Wapple. It could be dangerous if you don't know what leaves you're grabbing. Yeah, exactly. and, and I would not know what mm-hmm. leaves I'm grabbing. I, know I accidentally nothing. used a pine cone. Oh God! <laughs> One of my buddies had a funny moment when we were junior high kids. He he had to deuce in the woods behind our elementary school. Um, I, I don't know why we were back at the elementary school, but we were horsing around junior high, junior high age. My buddy had to go back in the woods and take a deuce, an emergency deuce. He wiped with his underwears, and then we ran his underwears up the flagpole. <laughs> <laughs> we ran his drawers up the flagpole at our elementary school, <laughs> our old elementary. You should have done it half staff for yeah. the underwear, you know? Yeah. Out of respect for the ruined underwear. You stand below and salute it. <laughs> it was a good pair of Zoomers. Poland's state forestry agency has put up signs showing people what to do if they have to take a dump in the woods. The notices are titled, How to Do a Poo in the Woods. And they contain five illustrated steps advising visitors to this particular forest on how to drop a number two skis. It's helpful. Whoa. I hope so. I hope it is helpful. 
One of the signs has a specially labeled shovel alongside it to help people bury they turds. Oh, I didn't even think of that. Yeah, that's what you're supposed to do, isn't it? You're supposed to bury them? You know, when I was a kid, like I mentioned on those Canadian fishing trips, I don't think I ever buried it. I just walked away. I know on the show Survivor, they're told to always bury your turds. Are they? <laughs> Uh, so they got a special shovel there for you. Out of respect? <laughs> yeah, for the fallen. <laughs> <laughs> they advise uh, folks in the forest who find themselves in this situation, they advise them to go deep in the woods, properly cover it up so that no one stumbles upon your surprise, they say. If paper is used, it should be buried along with the poop. If none is available, they suggest dry moss makes a useful alternative. Uh, the spokespeople from the state forest there in Poland say within a few hours, this is this is a good breakfast talk here. If you're not already, Christ, what am I, what am I saying? <laughs> I already got an F you. <laughs> Ten minutes ago, we were breakfast. talking about children eating turds, yeah. so forget about your breakfast. <laughs> Uh, state forests say within a few hours, forest beetles will take care of your poo. Mm. And there won't be any trace of it. Within a few hours? Really? They're hungry. Um, Just like the kids. Yeah, there, somebody told me what you have to do is you hang it in a tree so the bears don't eat it. <laughs> <laughs> there is a term for burying your feces covered with paper. It's called paperzaki. In Poland, they say the okay. So you take a dump in the woods. The moss will, the beetles will eat it up. The moss will continue to grow, and the next folks who visit the forest will not see a load of paper zaki, which is your turds covered in paper, and they can walk with a smile. They say. Yeah, stepping in human turds is even worse than stepping in animal turds. I agree with that. We were at. A, I don't know that I've ever stepped in human. Yeah, tree. I don't think I have either. What, what, my, what the hell's going well, on? Never by accident. <laughs> <laughs> my wife and I went to a, my ex-wife and I. We went to a restaurant once, and we park and we get out, and mm. she she steps you know out of the car. She's like, "Oh my god, I just stepped in dog crap," and I come and look, and just the size of it, I'm like, "Oh no, there's no way a, a dog <laughs> laid that turn. <laughs> you just stepped in human crap." <laughs> yeah, she was no longer hungry. <laughs> oh no. Here's a guy texted in and said, some douche took a poop in my shed one time. Yeah, 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 that was me. <laughs> <laughs> that was me. And I feel terrible about it. I remember once when we were teenage kids up at my dad's fishing shack, we were having a rock throwing contest to, trying to see if anyone could throw a rock across the river. You know, we were 17, 18 year old kids. This was kind of fun. We were still in shape. We could throw a rock a long damn ways. There were always dogs running around that property at my dad's old fishing shack. Uh, some of them belonged to us, some of them did not. But so there was always dogs around. And one of my buddies, he wants to win this rock throwing contest like, he, like real bad. He takes this huge running start. He's barefoot. And before he launches the rock, he goes, ah, oh, for God's sake. We look down. He stepped in the biggest pile of dog crap you've ever seen. <laughs> it is perfectly squashed up between his toes. Oh. It was just a... Uh, the half-assed morning show backtracks. Dak Prescott, quarterback for the Dallas Cowboys. Uh, oh, you guys are watching Hard Knocks, right? Yep. So did you see the episode, Josh, where I guess there was a clip in there somewhere where Dak Prescott talked about his fear of mascots? Yeah, I saw that part. I haven't watched the whole thing yet. That I sucks. I grabbed the audio. It's a little tough to hear, but hopefully, hopefully this comes through. I don't like mascots. When I was younger, I used to school with a lot of people in costumes. I used to think that would just be the best way to injure or hurt somebody if you wanted to. I would have never did any, anything harming. I used to tell my mom, that's the perfect place to kill somebody. Y'all think it's a fake chainsaw. I don't know I'm crazy. We put a blade on that bitch one day. That's stupid. Doesn't like anybody in a costume, including mascots. See, that I agree with Ashley. That, that would suck to be afraid of mascots. You're a pro ball player. You see one every Sunday. Uh, you see, I love mascots. Me That's too. one of my favorite things about any level of sports. I love the mascot. I was the mascot at my high school for one day. They fired me after five minutes. True story. It's a true story. I, I agree with him on the whole uh, chainsaw thing, though. 
Okay. I imagine he's talking about a haunted house and the guy with the chainsaw at the end, usually. Yeah. And you're worried that they're going to replace it with a real one? Yeah. Every, every once in a while, I'm like, this would be perfect. Like, if a serial killer just snuck into this? Yeah. See, but you, you have dark, dark thoughts. I do, I do. <laughs> that is true. You were the one who got that serial killer quiz correct uh, that we'd... <laughs> So he's afraid of mascots. It was a little tough to hear, but he said about mascots, that's, uh, uh, what, how, what is, I got it here somewhere. You think that's that person in the costume. You don't know who he is, okay? He's saying you shouldn't trust them because you can't see who they are. He's up to something. I used to tell my mom, Dak Prescott said, that's the perfect place to kill somebody. <laughs> oh, jeez. Like at a haunted house, he says, you think it's a fake chainsaw. You don't know if one of them put a plate on that bitch, <laughs> I think he says. Oh, my God. Uh, doesn't like mascots. Uh, I'm, I'm a huge fan. Now, there was a, a nationwide survey conducted. Speaking of mascots, a promotional company specializing in logos and branding. They're called Quality Logo Products. They did a survey to determine the best mascots, the worst mascots in college sports. They determined that Oklahoma State University mascot Pistol Pete is the worst mascot in college sports. Can any of you picture Pistol Pete? Oh, no. Yeah. He's <laughs> so creepy. He's like the cowboy <laughs> with like the big head Huge and on like head. a regular human-sized body. Yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> but you know who Pistol Pete looks like? He looks like Gary from Team America World Police. Oh, yeah. Oh, with the facial oh, hair, oh, the oh, eyebrows. He Definitely. is creepy looking. You know, it's got the human-like face and the cowboy outfit. This thing is so creepy. <laughs> what? They rank Pete as the third creepiest, the fifth most offensive, and, it, and Pete came in number one as the worst mascot. Now, if you're curious, the inspiration for Pistol Pete comes from a real-life cowboy named Frank Eaton, who was born in 1860. His father was killed by vigilantes. And then Frank tracked them down and killed the vigilantes. Eaton then became a cowboy. Pistol Pete the mascot came to life in 1958, the same year that Frank Eaton died. They also had a sexiest mascot lineup. Hmm. Sexiest. I don't really think about that. Me either. When I'm <laughs> That's looking probably at, good, you don't. <laughs> is that to prove that I'm... I count that as a win. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Proves that I'm not totally insane. <laughs> right, let me see if I can find the... I have some of it printed off, but then the printer, Josh... What? Stopped working. Well, here, do you want me to hand you a new one? Yeah, give him a new one. I I sp- this one right yeah. uh, ah! My oh, I know I have the sexiest mascot list in here somewhere. I'll, I'll get to it. But let me just tell you a little bit more. The best mascots in college sports... Goldie makes the top ten, and he should be number nice. one. Yeah, he should be awesome. number one, especially when you can. Number one is Willie the Wildcat from Northwestern University. Oh come on! Right? I mean, not that I dislike. I don't dislike Willie the Wildcat. I don't. I almost don't dislike any mascot. But Willie, he's just kind of a dopey looking cat. Goldie is Goldie. He's he's awesome. So uh, let me just give you the quick top ten best. Ten is Joe Bruin. And Josephine Bruin at UCLA. They're adorable together. Nine is Goldie. Eight is Freddie and Frida Falcon from Bowling Green State University. That looked like a very happy couple. How can you have anything bad to say about number seven? Puddles, the Oregon Duck. I oh, love yeah. Puddles. Yeah. Love them. Puddles will grab a large popcorn out of a stranger's hand and just dump it into his beak. <laughs> oh, man, that duck is adorable. <laughs> Shasta, the uh, the cougar from University of Houston, is number six. Number five, Bill the Goat from the Naval Academy. <laughs> Four is the bird from the Air Force Academy. Have you heard? That yes. Is- <laughs> number- Ryan, don't. <laughs> that is a cool mascot. You like the bird? Yep. It's cool Three, South Paw and Miss Paula. Paula, I should say, from South Alabama. Oh, I just Googled them. They look like a very Ooh. happy couple. They do. Two is Pouncer from the University of Memphis. One, again, Willie the Wildcat. Goldie deserves to be number one. Willie the Wildcat was also the sexiest. Okay, so a lot of people from Chicago filled out this survey then. That's obvious, <laughs> right? Yeah. 
The worst mascots? Um, that's the one where I have to... Okay, the worst mascots. Uh, Chanticleer, the Coastal Carolina University, some kind of a bird. Nine, the Demon Deacon from Wake Forest. I like him. I think that's cool. Mm. Kind of a... He's got the top hat on. Yeah, motorcycle. The Stanford tree is awesome. <laughs> you don't know about the Stanford. You, you're a mascot fan. You don't know the Stanford tree. No. Check him or whatever. Her. I don't know what it is. Oh. What is that? It's a damn tree, and it's got eyes and a mouth. <laughs> it looks homemade. Yeah, that's what's so great about it. Yeah. They've had this same uh, number seven flash, the Golden Eagle from Kent State. These are the worst mascots. I don't know. He looks okay to me. I like that one. The Nittany Lion from Penn State. See, he looks like he caught. Cost ten that, cents. Yeah, that you know. one's bad. But they've had the same outfit since the beginning of time, so I have, a, I have an appreciation for the Penn State setup. It's the same cheap-looking mascot outfit since the 1800s. Uh, the University of Hawaii Warrior is number five. He's a dude wearing war paint and stuff. Uh, I guess I don't know what the problem is with that. Um, uh, the Rebel from Las Vegas. Oh, that guy's creepy. I like his mustache. He's got a great mustache. Uh, a buddy of mine's dad looks exactly like that. <laughs> uh, number three worst mascot is Cayenne. He's a pepper from L- Louisiana Lafayette. He's a, he's a pepper wearing a football outfit. I don't see what the problem is. Well, he does have a I'm about to plan a scheme look on his face. <laughs> Maybe that's what they it's up to no good. You know, it reminds me of uh, Wapple when I see a, a, a pepper somewhere involved in sports. Come on, dude. Curry Man. Oh, yeah. Who's Curry Man? <laughs> Christopher Daniels, AEW wrestler Christopher Daniels, for a stretch of time, he was Curry Man. He came out dressed as a, a curry spice or whatever it is. Yeah. <laughs> and his intro was, he's hot, he's spicy, he's Curry Man. <laughs> he had, like, uh, orange flames coming up and yeah. a, a red oh, mask. <laughs> I believe he would team up at times with Shark Boy. Yeah. Number two on the worst mascot list, and I, I've always hated Purdue Pete. I always have with his big, giant, stupid face. Yeah. <laughs> and the number one, of course, we discussed is Pistol Pete. Isn't there a Wisconsin mascot that looks like a popcorn holder? Well, yeah, Bucky. That's Bucky. I, don't you like hate Bucky? Oh, I can't stand the sight of Bucky Badger. <laughs> He's a skunk in a popcorn box. <laughs> he has no neck. <laughs> Which was, I, I, and a listener texted that to me years ago, and I've run with it ever since. Um, Bucky Badger angers me. <laughs> He's just a skunk in a popcorn box, and I'm happy that he didn't make any list. <laughs> Randy Shaver, do you have a favorite mascot or anything like that? Well, I was just going to say, I grew up, you know, with Herky the Hawkeye. That was uh, the Iowa Hawkeye um, mascot. But then also at Iowa State, it's another bird. It's Cy the Cyclone, which I could never understand if you're if you are the cyclones, why it's a red bird? I, I didn't. I never got that. That's a good question. Why don't they have a spinning tornado type guy? Uh, yeah, I, I know. I, I just never got it. But uh, I'm happy to hear that uh, Cy made neither one of those lists because okay. I don't think it deserves to be on either one. Yeah, why the hell is it a bird? Why don't you know, if 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 Stanford can have a tree with eyes and a mouth, why can't Iowa State have a tornado with eyes and a mouth? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I I I, I don't understand it. But yeah, my high school yeah. had a lightning bolt named Zap with with, <laughs> with eyes and sunglasses. <laughs> That's so lame. <laughs> Did you really? Yeah, hey, I like school. that. Hey, why do you call I that? Like that. I actually looked up uh, why they picked a cardinal. It's because they said they thought it was too hard to think of a mascot that's a cyclone. So they start they landed on a cardinal because it's Iowa State colors. Oh, yeah, because it's red. Yeah. <sighs> okay, I just received uh, received a text message. It says, "Look up gritty from the Philadelphia Flyers." What do you think you're talking to yeah, an amateur? What? <laughs> <Gritty>. <laughs> do, do I do I sound like some kind of novice or something? Of course I know gritty. <laughs> We're not Tom Hanks. I just got back from the Castaway Island. We've no. been on the internet. <laughs> no, I, I love when gritty and Philly the fanatic get together. 
Oh, it's always a good time. Oh my gosh. Dana sent me a picture of his high school's ma- mascot. It's ridiculous. <laughs> I Look like at this, it. Nick. It's a big blue lightning bolt oh. with like sunglasses and a big <laughs> dorky smile. It's, I think it's cool. Yeah, we, we loved it when we were in high school. It, it, was, it looks like an emoji. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it does. It's got a butt chin. <laughs> yeah, it does. <laughs> so, I mean, I, I, I think you've told us what kind of character you were in high school. You didn't sign up to be Zap, the uh, mascot? You think they would let me anywhere near that guy? Costume, they knew better than that. <laughs> true. <laughs> it's true that I got fired after five minutes as the wise at a Trojan. I love that story. <laughs> I they gave me the gear, you know, and, it, and I wish I could have tucked myself into some kind of a foam outfit, but you know, the wise at a Trojan. I have no idea what they do nowadays. I'm not allowed anywhere near the school, but um, it's a joke. <laughs> when I was there, you just your average high school kid you put on the trojan helmet you put on the chest uh, thing what do they call that uh, the chest uh, plate oh, like the armor? armor yeah it made you look like you had abs and such yeah mm, was, yeah chest plate skirt oh uh, sword <laughs> shield right the, the the two class presidents asked me to do it and i i i wasn't exactly excited about it but you know i did and still do love attention so i said sure you know and they said, okay, what we're going to do is at the homecoming parade, we'll introduce you as this year's mascot, and you come out and do whatever you want to do, and then say whatever you want to say on the mic, and then you get the hell out of there. So I came out onto the basketball court, and, and I did a little this and that, and then I got on the mic, and I made a joke about Trojan condoms. Oh, boy. Duh. <laughs> and the crowd went wild. Because we're high school kids. Yeah, you knew your audience. Yeah, <laughs> high school kids. Of course, they're good. I think I said something like, I finally got a chance to wear a Trojan. Right? That was the joke. Nice. And I walk off the court thinking I just knocked it out of the park. And there is the principal or whoever they were, two principal and vice principal, I think they were. And they were furious. <laughs> Absolutely furious. That you've set me back 10 years. You know how long I've been trying to lose that stigma of the Trojan condom, and then you say it at our very own pep rally for homecoming. Oh, my God. All my years of fashion shows. That's a quote from Slapshot. We didn't go there, but he, he's, he's furious. Furious. And, I lo- and then I lost my cool because I really didn't even want to do it. I was just doing it for fun and, and because my friends who were the class presidents asked me to. So then I lost my cool and I throw the sword down the hall. Well, you can take this gear then and shove it up your ass. And I take <laughs> off the, I'm standing in the hallway in my drawers. <laughs> the Half-Assed Morning Show Backtracks. Have any of you ever been big Saturday Night Live fans? Mm, no. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Back, back in the day. Mm-hmm. I still watch it. Um, I certainly was a bigger fan in the olden days. Yes, yeah, I do still watch it every Saturday, just in case there's something for the show. Uh, Wapple, what's your version of back in the day? Uh, I would say like when Will Ferrell and stuff was on there. Okay, I don't know when that was. Well, late nineties then? Like, yeah, late nineties, yeah, right? Somewhere around there. I've well, seen the show like twice, maybe. <laughs> is that is that right? Yeah. So, but have you but, seen a lot of the bits like on YouTube? Oh, or? Uh, no. And when right. Chris Farley was on there too. Okay, mid nineties to late nineties. Yep. Um, I love the the lunch lady bit. I don't know the lunch lady bit. Lunch lady land. Yeah. <laughs> I've heard people hoagies say lunch lady. Hoagies and grinders, navy, navy beans, beans, navy beans. beans. Who did that? Who was the, uh, Sandler and Farley was yep. floating around as the lunch lady. That that sounds like singing. something. Sounds like something Sandler would do. I don't remember that one. <laughs> no, I've heard it said out loud. Yeah, for me personally, I was big into the Blues Brothers as a young guy. So I loved that bit. And then I, I've never been really huge on Saturday Night Live, but there was a stretch of time in the early 80s when I never missed it because of people like Eddie Murphy and things like that. Josh was just saying yesterday that the show wrapped up its 47th year or something like that. I mean, would that be the right math? They started Close, in yeah. 75. And some cast members are moving on. Um, I don't know who they are because I don't watch the show. I know you said it yesterday, Josh. I apologize, but... Pete Davidson, Kyle Moody, A.D. Bryant, uh, and... Uh, Kate McKinnon. Kate McKinnon. Ranker had their uh, subscribers vote for the best cast members mm-hmm. of all time. And it looks, out they, it looks like they've carved out a top 15 top cast members in the, in the history of Saturday Night Live. And they start with Dinkus. Dinkus. 
Someone just said his name a minute ago. Adam Sandler. Sandler. <laughs> they start with uh, Adam Sandler as the 15th best. He had a good run on that show, early 90s. I love Adam Sandler. Can't stand the sight of him. <laughs> He's got his moments for sure. From 90 to 95, Adam Sandler. At number 14, they go with Kristen Wiig. Very funny. Yeah, she's, who has she's more funny. talent in the tip of her pinky than 100 Adam Sandlers. <laughs> Kristen Wiig was on that show for seven, eight years, 2005 to 2012. I really like her, her style. She's very, very funny. 13... 13, 13, 13, 13. Amy Poehler. Yeah, she's great. I don't, I don't have a problem with Amy Poehler, but there, there's a glaring omission on this list that I would have at least put there. There's a few, Josh, because once I roll through the, uh, the top 15 here, according to the folks who dial in to Ranker.com, I'm going to roll through some, some, I mean, because, I mean, my God, 47 years now, there have been so many people who have come and gone, some of them very quickly. But there have been so many cast members that I think really deserve a little more credit. I'm with you. I'm looking forward to hearing the grand omission that you were just. I mean, there, there's to. quite a few. Yeah. There's one that came to mind right away, and the, the more I thought about it, there's there's actually plenty oh. that should have been higher up. But I know this is. I think Ranker works where it's it's uh, their readers vote. Vote. Yeah, you right? Isn't that how it goes? Down. Yep. Amy Poehler, number 13, number 12, Bill Hader. Folks love Bill Hader, right? Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah he's good. Just heard him on Conan's podcast. Yep. Been he, loving the new season of Barry, that show where he plays um, the hitman. I just started it. It's pretty good. Oh, yeah. it, takes, watched, it takes a while to get used to seeing Bill Hader run around as a precision <laughs> killer because you're used to him just being the goofball that's cracking up on Saturday Night Live. But you can tell he put the training in. He, he looks legit with the, with the guns in his hands. Yep. So it's not comedic in any form? It's, it's funny, it like in a dark way. Oh, dark, dark comedy. Dark yeah. comedy. Oh, I like that. All right, all right. Well, I love dark comedy. Bill Hader, very funny guy. He was on the show for six, seven years, 2005 to 2013. Number 11, Gilda Radner, who died very young, and I can't remember what what killed Gilda Radner. She was one of the original cast members, 1975 to 1980. The one character I remember from Gilda Radner was Rosanna Rosanna Dana. You recall that one, Josh? Very funny. It's like ovarian cancer, age of 42. Ah, for Pete's sake. Yeah, that's yeah. not funny. That's too young. No. Number 10, Dana Carvey. Yeah, president of the male Dana Club. Oh. <laughs> he's the big guy. Yeah, he, he's the big cheese. Yep, yep. Where does Dana White fall on that list? Uh, very far down the list. I don't care for that guy too much. <laughs> <laughs> we, we stopped inviting him to the meetings. What about Dana Plato? Ooh. Oh, God. You're going to be mad at me because I don't know who that is. Uh, that is... Uh... Kick one, him in the wiener. <laughs> one wiener kick. One of Cub- Cubby's first crushes, Dana Carvey. Uh, pardon me, Dana Pl- Plato? I, I, I lost it. That's I think it's Plato. Plato, yeah. yeah. I don't know why I wanted to call her Dana Pluto. Uh, she played Kimberly on the hit sitcom uh, Different Strokes. Strokes. Okay, I just looked her up. Dana Carvey was never really my style. He was on the show for uh, from 86 to 93, but I I get it. Number nine, his partner in the, uh, what was their combo again? Uh, Wayne and Garth. Wayne and Garth. We got Mike Myers at number nine. Had some great stuff on Saturday Night Live. Mike Myers. Oh, I like him. Eight is John Belushi, an original cast member. He was on the show from 75 to 79 and died very young and horribly from drugs. I'm not trying to start trouble, but I never was all that crazy about John Belushi. But, and I'll get back to you on that. Number 17 of Faye. Ah, I She's love awesome, her. Legend. Gosh, we were just talking about her. Yeah, one of the funniest people around. So good. Six, another guy who checked out awful young, although I believe my memory serves me he was murdered, Phil Hartman. Yep. yep. Very, very funny guy. I am Minnesotan. Oh. Sadly enough. Gosh, bad Minnesota. He was on the show from 86 to 94, and the man was just terrific. His delivery was perfect, and he was great at... Great at playing deadpan type characters, Phil Hartman. Five, Dan Aykroyd from 75 to 79. And here's where I'll I'll go back to the Belushi thing. For me personally, aside from Elwood Blues, I can't say that Dan Aykroyd really ever thrilled me. You know what I mean? Yeah, I, I, I mean I've seen old clips from him and stuff. Like I, the one that I always think of is when he was doing, he was like a TV pitchman selling the Bassmatic 76. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I don't know, Josh. Your your thoughts? Uh, yeah, I liked him enough. I just never thought that he was the kind of guy that could really 
just stand on his own. Um, again, I'm the biggest Blues Brothers fan you'll ever meet. Belushi and Aykroyd together as the Blues Brothers were effing oh genius. God. Absolute <laughs> genius. It's just beyond that, I really can't say that four is Eddie Murphy from 80 to 84. And Eddie Murphy was, when he was young, it was just unbelievable. My favorite character being Mr. Robinson from Mr. Robinson's Neighborhood <laughs> back in those days. Three, he wasn't on the show long. And during those years, he was more or less a kind of a second character. I don't know the term, you know. he, You know what I'm saying? Like he yeah, wasn't... The sketches didn't always revolve around him. He was kind yes. of a secondary player. In and a that lot would of be bits. Bill Murrah. Mm-hmm. Bill Murrah, number three. I think he's that high on the list just because everything he's done since then. If we were talking just Saturday Night Live accomplishments, I don't think uh, Bill Murray, as he, Bill Murrah, as you call him, would be that high. It's because he was very short. He wasn't there for very long. Very, very funny. Very, don't get yeah. me wrong. I mean, Bill Murray is one of the funny. Two is Will Ferrell. Mm-hmm. He had some great stuff on Saturday Night Live. And uh, number one, they're going with Farley, who was mm-hmm. wildly funny on that show. Oh, yeah, I can't God, argue yeah. with that one. Mm-hmm. So what, what cast member from the history of Saturday Night Live, Josh, who was the first one that came to mind that you thought, damn, they, they deserved a little bit better on that ranker list? Well, two, the, actually, the first one that came to mind, mostly because he recently passed, Norm MacDonald. Oh, yeah. I think should have been on. And Chevy Chase, who's one of my all-time favorites. Yeah, you know, th- that's the thing. You know, Chevy Chase was the star of the first season of Saturday Night Live. I don't think there was any question about that. But was he only on one or two seasons? Two yeah, years. It was, yeah, it was just a couple. Yeah, he didn't stick around long. John Lovitz. Oh, my God. <laughs> Kevin Nealon. <laughs> uh, <laughs> David Spade. Yeah, Spade oh, was good. Oh, yeah. Uh, okay, was Mar- Martin Short was on Saturday Night Live, right? Oh, my damn. Yes. Now, I'm, I never was a big Nealon guy, but y- if you listen to this program, you know Josh and I, John Lovitz, we don't need the man to say a word. <laughs> John Lovitz. <laughs> Martin Short was so incredibly funny on that show. He simply is one of the funniest men that have ever mm-hmm. lived. Martin Short is an effing genius. I mean, Kevin Nealon's Mr. Subliminal, that bit was genius, speaking of genius. <laughs> I Mar- loved that bit. What was Mar- <laughs> Ed Grimley? Do you remember the character Ed Grimley that Martin Short portrayed on Saturday Night Anybody? Barely. Mm, oh, no. my God. I used to imitate that as a child. I loved Ed Grimley. He talked like this, and he said things like, I must say, if you're old enough to remember, you know what I'm talking about. I'm just going to roll through some of the other names. Jim Brewer. Now, I've never really dug his style, but everybody seemed to... Everyone was crazy about Jim Brewer for a while on Saturday Night Live. Yep. I, I'm with you on that one. Um, yeah, he wasn't one of my... But there, he definitely had his moments, that's for sure. Here's one that... I mean, I, I just think too much time has passed for for some of these names to be remembered. Um, and I'm just, I'm just going to imagine that the majority of people who are on Ranker uh, are a little younger... Yeah, But maybe I'm wrong because they did throw names like Gilda Radner and and things like that into their top 15. Maybe I'm wrong. But Billy Crystal was incredible on Saturday Night Live for a few years, a couple years. Billy Crystal's characters. God, I guess I never realized he was on there. Oh, my damn. You look marvelous. Remember that one, Josh? Love that one. And I think his best bit on Saturday Night Live, and again, if you're a little younger, you'll have no idea what I'm talking about. I think it was he and Christopher Guest who, you know, part of Spinal Tap, Christopher Guest, and he was in, oh, what was the dog show movie, uh, Best in Show? Oh, and yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. Christopher Guest is lights out funny. He and Billy Crystal played the bumbling apartment repairman <laughs> uh, duo, Josh, where and it wasn't about what they did. They would have these conversations where Billy Crystal would say, you know when you're uh, like... <laughs> You're sawing at the webbing between your toes with an X-Acto knife, and then you pour oh. some Tabasco sauce on top of it. I hate when that happens. <laughs> yep. The, I know what you mean. The I hate, yeah. And then the other guy would say, oh, it's like the other day I took one of those, and Billy Crystal would say, staplers? And he'd say, yeah. And I just started stapling my eyelids shut. <laughs> I mean, I hate when that happens. If, <laughs> if we could find some audio on that, I mean, that, that was... Jane Curtin was great as a straight character. Jane Curtin. People are texting in Steve Martin. Now, he was never on the show as a cast member, was he? I no, he was, he was not. No. Like a special guest and a host. He's mm-hmm. hosted like 15 times, damn Steve yeah. Martin was never a cast member. 
But I'm just going to bomb through some of these names, and some of them didn't last long. And some of them, they didn't last long for good reason. They just, it just didn't work. But one of them would be Robert Downey Jr., who oh, now wow, is yeah. one of the biggest effing stars in the world. Chris Elliott. I love Chris Elliott. Is a genius. I forgot he was on there. It didn't last long, I don't think, for Chris Elliott. Maybe one year. I was just uh, quoting some Chris Elliott uh, a couple days ago from Cabin Boy. Oh, God, Cabin Boy. I mean, that is so underrated. Mm. Although, I wonder if I watch it now if I would think it was terrible. At the time, I really enjoyed it. What was his sitcom where he lived with his parents? Something Life. Yeah, Get a Life. Was that it? Effing Hilly. <laughs> Chris Elliott. I mean, okay, Jimmy Fallon was on that show forever, was he not? Mm-hmm. He was, yeah. Mm-hmm. Was yeah. he just not that memorable? Or what, do you, what would you say? I never watched Jimmy oh Fallon my on. God, his bit was Sean Hayes, the Jeffries, or whatever it was. I don't know that one. They run an uptight store, and they tell everyone to get out of the store, and then Will Ferrell comes in with his small phone. (laughs) Okay. I don't don't remember that. Oh, it's so funny. (laughs) I think he was pretty polarizing on that show because he would break constantly. You mean like he would start laughing during the – he couldn't contain himself? Right. That makes sense. Some people found that really endearing and kind of – kind of charming other people found it very very annoying that isn't the guy, that it, that's funny that's it is. the same thing with keenan thompson mm-hmm. i love keenan thompson but people criticize him because he can't hold back his laugh i think it's funny yeah. that the guy can't i think it's more accepted i remember I, I can't remember who i was listening to somebody somebody from one of the cast i talked about how lauren michaels hated it right he would just freak out because he thought you were trying to draw more attention to yourself and, and you're taken away from the bit and then jimmy fallon kind of, I guess, loosened up that take. But yeah, he was by far the worst offender as far as that goes. I mean, mm-hmm. he wouldn't just kind of crack a smile. He'd be crying. He'd I be dying. Yeah. He, 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 he did in the Jeffries bit a lot. <laughs> yeah, More, he, he could not keep it together. Yeah. More SNL characters. Will Forte. Don't you love him, Dana? Yeah, I love Will Forte. Very funny guy. Al Franken. Of course, Stuart Smalley is one of my favorite characters ever. <laughs> People, Tracy Morgan is coming in via text. He Dude, was funny. Tracy Morgan was so funny, and I, I, like I said, I only sporadically visited Saturday Night Live since the mid '80s. Just once in a while, I'd run into a little bit of this or that. One of my favorite bits of all time: Tracy Morgan is living under a manhole. He's living under the street. <laughs> And Britney Spears visits him in his little manhole uh, house. House. Anyone follow that? Yeah. Oh, my God. And he sings some song about a doo-doo pie. <laughs> oh, God. I think he ate a doo-doo pie. He was singing about eating a doo Gilbert Gottfried, the recently passed Gilbert Gottfried, he was, only, he was not a regular. He was like a bit character. But I mentioned Christopher Guest. Anthony Michael Hall didn't last long. Here's a guy who I think is very well thought of amongst comedians and comedy actors daryl hammond yeah he was great colin is it jost jost yeah he's funny he and michael che or shay che che Che. those guys when they write jokes for each other it's it's awesome but so uncomfortable Mm -hmm. so crazy colin gets it the worst by far he's been on the show for a long time this guy yeah Yeah. he's the head writer right now too oh really Mm -hmm. and he's married to what's her nuts scarlett johansson yes oh that's got to be a total nightmare (laughs) Uh, and he owns the most punchable face of all time Oh, just, I, I like, he's a good-looking dude. I just, but I hear what you're saying, because he looks like a frat boy. He does. He's got a very frat boyish vibe to and him, And he gets sure. crap for that a uh-huh. lot. Yeah, I he, know. he owns it, too. Like he, he he brings it up himself. A very This is a, an acquired taste, and I'm just throwing these names out there. I'm not saying that I was one way or the other. Chris Kattan was on the show for oh, a long yeah. time. He had some decent stuff. You know, plenty of techs are coming in with, with his name. Seth Myers, doesn't he host a show now? Yep. Mm-hmm. After mm-hmm. Fallon. Dennis Miller. Although um, I, I could never really get never into really Dennis get into Miller. But, I mean, he, they're... I liked him on Saturday Night Live enough. Yeah. It's kind of after that that right. I, I wasn't as much of a fan of what he was doing. His news, he was the anchor on the Saturday Night Live news. I mean, that was where he found his groove. Joe Piscopo wasn't... I mean, his his he gets made fun of a lot, and he has been made fun of a lot for years. But his um, Frank Sinatra bit was unbelievable there in the 80s. Chris Rock... Yeah. Oh, I thought he was on the list. Maybe oh, no. I just assumed he would be. No, not on the top 15. Should have been. Uh, I what never, if- uh, another guy, I never really, I'm not familiar with much of his stuff, but I thought he just hit it out of the park when he was on Saturday Night Live. This Andy Samberg guy. Yeah. yeah it, oh, especially yeah. they're like those, what's Lonely the name of the group? Island. Yeah, Lonely Island bits. Just yesterday, my wife and I were joking about D in the box. Yeah. 
That's such a good good bit. I got to see those guys in concert when they played the Armory a few years back, and that was one of the funniest, best concerts I've ever been to in my life. And it's I know, just hilarious. Dana, you love Cecily Strong. Oh yeah, she's my girlfriend. She doesn't know that though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she should be at least in the top thirty, I would imagine. She's very funny. And there's one more that I thought was interesting that it didn't get more votes, but there's so many people to choose from and the the top 15 that we read from ranker you can't really argue too much with most on the list with the exception of sandler of course uh this gal i've always found to be so funny and that's molly shannon yeah she's great man was she fun she's still funny she was also recently on the uh the uh oh my god conan o'brien podcast there's another it's, it's killing me that i can't remember her name another very popular Maya Rudolph. Rudolph. Yeah, yeah, Maya Rudolph. I had this one name mm-hmm. I jotted down when we yeah. started talking oh, about really? this. Oh, really? Okay. She's great. Mm-hmm. But you got Native Restoration Jesus is texted in, and he says, all you got to do is say John Lovett, and I crack up mm-hmm. laughing. Yeah, because you could picture his face. Uh, can't forget about Bill Hader. We didn't forget about Bill Hader. We mentioned him. He didn't make – oh, no, he was in the top 15. Yep. Something about this and that. Eat a doo-doo pie. <laughs> um, Tracy Morgan sang to Britney Spears. The half assed morning show backtracks. Half assed morning show. They're loud, they lose control, they do their little circus act, they're a nuisance. 93X. Our technicians are geared up and ready to make sure your system is running reliably this summer. Regular maintenance from standard heating helps prevent costlier breakdowns in the future, and we know they always happen at the worst times. Summer's coming, but don't sweat it. Stay cool with standard heating and air conditioning. Beat the heat now and ensure comfort all summer long. Their expert technicians are ready to ensure your AC is in top shape. Call and schedule a tune-up today at 612-824-2656 or online at standardheating.com. Afford Anything talks about how to avoid common pitfalls, how to refine your mental models, and how to think about how to think. Paula, while certainly you can mess up on a million dollars a year, it is far less likely than it is on $30,000 a year. Right. I would meet wonderful people that were struggling with a budget that was super tight. It was 100%. You need to make more money. Make smarter choices and build a better life. Afford Anything, wherever you listen. The 93X Half-Assed Morning Show Backtracks Edition. They did it again. NFL season on the way now. Uh, they they did it again. Uh, somebody's ranking the best football movies ever. <laughs> you still want to bother going through with this kind of stuff? Yeah, I enjoy this. Okay, good, 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 good. I love sports movies. Yeah, me too. Uh, football movies. All right. I got a top 20 here. I have no idea how this absolute steaming pile of horse manure <laughs> from Calgary would make any list... I don't care if it's a top thousand football movies. There's no way that necessary roughness. Speaking of Sinbad, <laughs> there's no way necessary roughness should make the top twenty. That movie sucks eggs. Uh, while you're describing, I was going to say I bet anybody that uh, there'll be a movie I like. I do like. Necessary no, you roughness. don't. Yeah. Come on, it's stupid. But I it's get fun. it. You're quirky. You like no. Yoshi and you like Vin Diesel. I get it. It's enough. It's funny. God, it's not funny. <laughs> That's uh, Scott Bakula. That's the other guy in yes. that one. Number 19 is also, it's a horrible, horrible movie. I mean, it's it's a true story, and, and it's touching, but the acting is just horrible. Radio? Did you guys see Radio? Oh, no. I, yeah. It was I good. Cuba Gooding Jr.? Yeah. It was good. It's horrible. It's not horrible. Yeah. Number 18, never saw it. The Express. The Express. Never even heard of it. Ah, it. Who was that about Randy Shaver? A Syracuse running back? Is I that swear. about, oh, um, yes. I can't think of the guy's name, and I feel like a damn jackass. Ernie Davis. Ernie Davis. That's it. Yes. Number seventeen, Adam Sandler's effing longest yard, which never should have happened. I love that movie. Shut up. I'm sorry. <laughs> Sixteen, Jerry Maguire. It really was okay, right? Yeah. 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 I don't really consider it too much of a football movie, but yeah. Well, he's a football agent. Yeah, he's yeah. football mm-hmm. agent. Yeah. It deals with foot. 15, never saw it, Little Giants. I'm guessing that's one <laughs> oh, of Dana's yeah. favorites. That is a good movie. <laughs> that's a classic. God. 14, I'm, I'm sorry. This this is awful. Uh, again, one of the worst acted movies I've ever seen in my life. 
How James Kahn, didn't oh. he recently die? Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, he's been dead for a while. Oh, I thought it was only like a week or so. James Kahn? He, he was up in Calgary. <laughs> <laughs> How long has he been dead? Two weeks, a month maybe at the uh, most? July, July 6th. Oh, God, yeah, yeah a month. Yeah. How James Kahn got talked into being part of the program, I have no idea. Yeah, that movie's rough. Oh, my damn. 13 never saw it draft day. <laughs> <laughs> Terrible, so Kevin Costner. <laughs> Terrible. It's so hilarious. Okay. Be bad. I'm glad that someone else finds Such a movie. Such a bad movie. Good, good. Yeah. So I don't sound like the only one who. Yeah. Bad movie. Twelve is good. The Blind Side. Oh, yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Classic. Very good. Always yeah. makes me cry. Eleven. I haven't seen it since I was a little kid. Speaking of making you cry, Brian's song. Mm. Yes. It's classic. About Brian Piccolo, Chicago yeah. Bears. Ten. Never saw it all the way through, but I hear good things. Any given Sunday. I like that movie. That's yeah, cool. Good one. One. Never mm-hmm. seen it. Nine is decent. Varsity Blues. Yeah. 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 Whipped, cream, whipped cream bikinis. How can you go wrong? I think they played football in it, too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, that's, yeah. Anytime you mention that movie, that's the first thing everybody says. Whipped cream bikini. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Speaking of James Conn, his son is in that movie. I can't think of his first Scott. name. Scott. Mm-hmm. Number eight, Burt Reynolds' Longest Yard, which should be number one. Good flick. Number seven, We Are Marshall. Never saw it. Oh, that's very, a good one. Very, very, good. very, very good movie. Mm-hmm. Yep. Matthew uh, McConaughey. Kind of yes. lights out in very it. Very good movie. I have oh. no idea how this makes the list so high because uh, this movie was awful as well. Number six, Invincible with Mark Wahlberg. <laughs> what? Uh, <laughs> Invincible? I'm yeah. with you. Mark Mark? Uh, that movie bad is, movie. It's, yeah. it's bad yeah. movie. Piss yeah. poor. Uh, maybe I'm biased. I just like anything with Absolutely Mark Wahlberg awful. in it. Yes. Horrible acting, horrible everything. <laughs> Five, the effing water boy, because suckers fall for no. Adam Sandler's nonsense Whoa, all over. Even I admit, I don't like it that really, one at really all. Sucks. Four, never saw it, but I hear good things. The replacements with Keanu Reeves. Yeah, yep. yeah. that's a fun one. Yep. Yep. Three, wildly overrated Rudy. Yeah, I don't, I don't no, care for Rudy at all. Good. Two is very good. Uh, Friday Night Lights, very yes. good. Oh, love it. Re- mm-hmm. Remember, the Titans has to be number one. It is, Randy. Yeah. I just it's, watched that movie for the first it's time. It's a with sensational my son. movie. What did you think? Did you and your son like it? Oh, yeah. Loved yeah. it. Mm-hmm. Since I, I, I love Denzel. So. Yeah. I would put Friday Night Lights before Remember the Titans. No way. I, w- I loved Friday Night Lights. Booty Miles. I ain't mad at you, Wapple. I've never seen Remember the Titans, but I do think that Friday Night Lights is that good. <laughs> Really, I'm not joking. No, I, no, I really no. do think I was, it's that I good. I was laughing at something else because I, I first read the book Friday Night Lights for a book report. And Dork. I, and I loved it. And then the movie came out. I'm like, well, there's no way the movie's going to be as good. And then I watched the movie, and I loved the movie. <laughs> and then they made a TV show about it. I'm like, yeah. okay, there's no way they're going three for three here. <laughs> Did they go three for yeah, three? it's one of my favorite shows ever. Yeah. <laughs> they went three for three. The TV show's good, too. Yeah. yeah. The TV show's fantastic. Yep. That's with the uh, who's the guy, the main star of the TV show? Uh, Chandler, what's his name? Um, God, Friday night. Kyle Chandler. Kyle Chandler. There it is. Now, the last Boy Scout. Can't that be counted as a football movie? Kinda. When, when I Google football movies, that's one of the one that pops up here. Yeah. Hmm. Also, uh, what about Ace Ventura? Mm-hmm. Big time. <laughs> huh? What about Air Bud? Yeah. <laughs> no. hey, if you're going to say the name, say it right. It's Air Bud Golden Retriever. That, no, is it receiver? Yeah, receiver. Receiver. Well, that's the football Gosh. version. Well, what the hell? Aren't you glad you got up early this morning? Yes. <laughs> well, what are we doing wrong now? It's a football movie. Just because a dog plays it doesn't mean it doesn't count. Well, how so about, well, well, think, of all the, think of all the things you could have done, Janelle, that could have been meaningful this morning. Uh, I think Janelle would like the Air Bud movies. Do you guys remember when I first started doing this show? and you insisted that I watch Ernest Goes to Camp. <laughs> <laughs> we did? I don't remember that at all. I don't yes. think that was that us. It was oh, you guys. It was. Why would we do that? I don't know. Like to mess with you? I don't know. I, mean, I, I liked it when I was a little, little kid. You were mad that I hadn't seen it and you were like, go watch Ernest Goes to Camp. <laughs> I don't remember that Are at all. Are you serious? Yeah. That's, uh, oh I, I, I apologize, whoever I, idea that was. That's. <laughs> it was Ross's. Oh, well, that, we okay. can't be speaking ill of the dead. R.I.P. <laughs> Let me, well, back to Airbud real quick. How much does it cost for a ticket? <laughs> $1. Is it $1? It's only $1. Well, that means I can bring two of my friends. <laughs> How much for three tickets, Randy, for Airbud? Yay. <laughs> Yay. That means I can bring four of my friends. So people are saying, oh, you're just going to forget this movie, this movie. It was football movies. 
football movies. What are, what are they saying? Well, like basketball, the sand lot, you know. No, no, oh, no, it's, it's football. football movies. Open up your ears. <laughs> what are you listening from Edmonton? <laughs> Calgary. <laughs> You know what they missed? I'll tell you what they missed on the greatest football movies of all time. I'll tell you right now. It's called Everybody's All American. Which one's that? Pardon me? Which one is that? What do you mean, which one is that? I've never seen that one. Oh, uh, interesting way to ask that question. Uh, it's from the mid-'80s. It's uh, um, Dennis Quaid. Dennis Quaid. Jessica Lang. Jessica Lang. The story of the Grey Ghost, Gavin Gray, who was a terrific running back at LSU, and then the trials and tribulations of... Of the football life. It's really, really good. John Goodman is in the movie. Really, really good. I don't know why that movie is forgotten about. Maybe because it was too long ago. But then again, we're talking about The Longest Yard. Not that anyone should ever forget about The Longest Yard. Was it too much of a stretch to count Dazed and Confused as a football movie? Yes. Why would that be a football movie? Because Pink plays football. And the whole thing is about whether he's going to keep playing on the team or not. If he's going to do his own thing. Well, wouldn't you say the whole thing's about smoking pot and getting laid? <laughs> True. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, most That was kind of like his St. Cloud yeah. State experience as well. <laughs> most, most, most of Ace Ventura is about, uh, you know, tracking down Well, pets. I was joking around I know. about Ace Ventura. Oh, American Underdog, people are saying. The Kurt Warner oh, story. Yeah. I like yeah. that movie. I still haven't seen that one. That actually was a good movie. It was. I watched it, and I was very skeptical about it, but I, it actually was good. A few people have texted in. Did you mention the program? Yeah, I mentioned it. It sucks. <laughs> That's how we mentioned it. Please don't tell me you're serious about liking the program. <laughs> Somebody says, what about the movie Wildcats? <laughs> oh, gosh, Goldie Hawn. Yeah, that's... Well, when I was in ninth grade, I thought that was pretty funny. Yeah, I liked yeah. it, too. Goldie yeah. Hunt, Woody, Woody Harrelson, Harrelson, Wesley yeah. Snipes. Yep. Who am I missing? Um, Nipsey Russell. Nipsey Russell. Right. Yeah. That's his catchphrase in yep, the movie. exactly. The 93X Head Half-Ass Morning Show. 93. The 93X Half-Ass Morning Show podcast is sponsored by Standard Heating and Air Conditioning. New episodes drop each weekday. If your podcast platform has ratings, go ahead and give us five stars and uh, maybe give our enemies one. Thanks, and here's a word from our sponsor. Stay cool with Standard Heating and Air Conditioning. Beat the heat now and ensure comfort all summer long. Their expert technicians are ready to ensure your AC is in top shape. Call and schedule a tune-up today at 612-824-2656 or online at standardheating.com.